everybody, Dustin Dale's back here once again. I'm at the Funny Bone Comedy Club, 168th in Dodge. And once a year, this guy comes through town. His name is Nick Griffin. He's a fan favorite around here. they got to have him back every single year. So please welcome to Omaha this weekend, Nick Griffin. How you doing, bud? Great. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem. Now, obviously, as a comedian, you travel a lot. Uh, do. How do you like flying? Uh, well, I, you know, I've been doing stand-up for 29, 30 years, so I'm over it. I, I get it. I get we get in the plane and wait and sit in cramped seats. I feel like I've experienced everything I need to flying-wise. If it never happened again, that'd be great. <laughs> but, I, but I love doing stand-up, so I, it's part of the business, and it's not as bad as I make it out to be, but... Now this week there was a lot of uh, there was a story, a couple stories going on about some chaotic passengers, people getting unruly. You ever get stuck next to somebody you just absolutely can't stand? I have not. I th that's you know I guess the reason why I shouldn't complain so much. I've never really had a huge problem. I mean, occasionally you do get the classic traditional uh, crying baby, but um, I I grew up with six brothers and sisters. I live in New York City. Um, so I'm used to noise and I, I can pretty much sleep through it all. Yeah, it's not that bad for me. Well, look at you. I always seem to get stuck next to someone that's just terrible to deal with. Really? Like, I what do. What would be an example? What would they do, you think? Well, I got stuck next to one kid who thought he was going to be a drummer one day. Oh. So he had his headphones in. I couldn't hear the song, but uh, apparently I was supposed to recognize the song by what he was playing uh -huh. on the, all the seats around him. <laughs> So that was a bit of a pain. That is. I could see how that would be a problem, yeah. I haven't had that experience. It's been okay. I I'm sure there's many people, though, who, who sit next to me and, and you know, are talked uh, to later, and they're like, God, this guy just sat there the whole time. He never said anything to me. He never acknowledged me, and uh, he slept through loud babies. I mean, I, I'm probably the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good problem, I think. I would like to sit next to somebody who doesn't talk a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, another thing that happened this week was the, uh, of course, there was the presidential debates. A lot of people, you know, one side or the other, they, they, some people thought that Trump was good. Some people thought that Hillary was good. Have you been following the debates at all? Well, it's interesting that uh, in the sense that I, I do stand up, I'm on stage literally 350 out of 365 days a night. I was doing stand up the whole time the debate was going. Obviously, I, I read a little bit about who won, Trump won, Hillary won, and back and forth, but um, I just feel like every day I want to get better as a comic, and I really don't get too wrapped up in any of mm -hmm. it. You know, I have so little money that I don't think either of them is going to help me a whole <laughs> lot. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, I think so. Now, how often do you get to come through the Midwest? I understand that you're actually from the Midwest. I am. I'm from uh, the suburbs of Kansas City. I grew up there. I went to college, um, geez, an hour outside of Kansas City, a small liberal arts college called William Jewell. Mm -hmm. So I spent um, my entire life up until 23 um, in Kansas. I love the Midwest. I played tons of Iowa, uh, Nebraska, Ohio, Michigan, just everywhere. Mm -hmm. I had Kansas. Denver. Um, so I'm here a lot. Uh, you know, like the coasts have tons of, like you go to San Francisco or you go to, I don't know, um, you know, New York City or Boston, they have a ton of things to do. Whereas you come to, you know, Kansas City and there's not 8 billion things to do. So they tend to draw more, more crowds. And I, I'm obviously more comfortable with the Midwest crowds just because that's what I am. And uh, I'm proud of it. And mm -hmm. And I like it. Yeah, I like coming back. I have a lot of family in the uh, Midwest. I have a sister, or, I, or my sister's daughter lives here in Omaha, so it's oh, great. Really? Yeah. That's I cool. nursing school, yeah. It's a place to crash while you're here? That's right. I have, <laughs> someone to, I have someone to have coffee with and crash at and, yeah, hang out with. Because that's another thing about being on the road. You're sitting, you know, 23 hours a day by yourself mm -hmm. in a hotel room in, in, you know, some industrial park. So uh, you do need company every now and then. That's good. That's good. There was a movie that came out this weekend, uh, The Magnificent Seven. It was a Western. It was a big hit. Denzel in it. Were you ever, did you ever follow many Westerns? Did, are you a big Western fan? Well, I, right before I came over here, The uh, Unforgiven was on with, um, with the wonderful Clint Eastwood. And uh, I was a huge fan. My dad, obviously, that's a, kind of an old-timer dad thing, uh, Westerns. And uh, I used to watch them a lot when I was younger. And it is a cool look, you know. But I think, I was thinking about that. It just, it becomes less... It becomes so far in the past now that it does. I think it's it's maybe a little bit less appealing unless you have somebody like Chris Pratt and mm -hmm. Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke. But it, I, I I plan on seeing the movie. Yeah. Now, do you, do you have a favorite type of movie genre that you like? I do. I am a horror movie fan. I had an older brother, who um, 
made me sit up and watch horror movies with him every day uh, or every Friday and Saturday in Kansas City when we were kids. They had a thing called Friday Fright Night, and then they had a Saturday Scream Night, and it was just bad B movies. But it got into my system, and I've never been able to kick it, so I generally see every horror movie that comes out. Do you have a couple favorites that have come out recently? Well, recently I really, really liked Lights Out. I thought it was, um, you know, I know it was kind of hooky and a little bit uh, hokey, but I I liked it. I thought it was really good, and I thought... um, don't Breathe was pretty good. And actually, uh, Ghostbusters, which obviously isn't a real horror movie, it's a comedy, but I really enjoyed that as well. Anything with ghosts in it, I'll watch. See, I was, I'm like you. I really enjoy the new Ghostbusters film. A lot of people didn't like it. Just, I think just because it can't get over the original and how great it was, uh, yeah. but I really like the new one. I was one of those people when the original Ghostbusters came out that it, it literally blew my mind. I'd never seen anything so funny, and the mix, obviously, of ghosts and comedy was just, and obviously Bill Murray, and just everyone was wonderful in it. But I was really um, surprised how much I enjoyed the new Ghostbusters. I really, really liked it a lot. Now, you're no stranger to TV. You've made quite a few appearances on late-night television. Yeah. How many times were you on David Letterman? I was on uh, David Letterman. Actually, technically, I was on 12 times. I, I did stand-up 11. One time I got bumped, but he brought me out at the end to say goodnight. So technically, I was on there uh, a dozen times. But no, I did stand-up on there 11 times. And uh, I, I, miss, I miss doing that show. That was a lot of fun. That was a huge boost to my career. Are you best friends with David Letterman? We are very, very good <laughs> friends. Uh, matter of fact, we need to cut this short. I need to check in with him. I always do before showtime. No, he was very nice. He always uh, was incredibly pleasant, and they always made me feel very welcome. But no, I don't know Dave at all. I know more than you do. Uh, you've done Stephen Colbert as well. You've I done have. Conan. Is there a different set that you like to perform depending on which show you're on? No, I think it depends on, you know, it's like... Um, yeah, well, you just you, you're always working on new jokes, so you get five, six, seven minutes together, and whichever one you have, uh, whichever one you haven't done most recently, whichever one is the longest that you've been on, you send it to them, right? So next one, I will probably send a set to his Conan, just because he was the, because um, I already did Colbert recently, and I wouldn't send him something this soon. Um, so, but Conan's show is so much fun, just because I think like Conan, they're very fun and silly and nice and it's a very warm atmosphere letterman was very literally the temperature was very chilly in the uh in the building and you never really saw anyone because it was an old building but conan it's very open and everyone's coming in and, and, and greeting you and telling you how happy they are there and colbert was uh, a bit like that too colbert was uh colbert was a blast so it was nice to be back on that letterman stage and now steven's got it back i think it's uh, i think it's i think it's wonderful I'm really enjoying what Stephen Colbert is doing. I, th- I think that I think well, that he was a good hear. choice. That's good. Well, I think my, uh, I think my favorite though that I, you got to get on James Corden. He's one of my favorites out there. Yeah, the only reason I probably haven't pursued that as much is um, I don't think they have comics on as much as some of these other shows, and it's in L.A., which is harder because I'm in New York. Oh, wow. Harder for me to to get out to. But uh, yeah, I'm a fan too. I think what he's doing is really interesting, and it'll be. Uh, I think they're going to continue to have more comics on, and that definitely will be something I would like to do just to say I did it because it's a cool show. Now, writing jokes for the stage, you also write jokes for radio as well. Is there any sort of difference doing as well, far as radio jokes? Yeah, I guess I used to write for a couple radio shows, and it was just more topical. Like you were, mm-hmm. you you mentioned a bunch of uh, recent news stories, and that's what you do. You would look at the five biggest headlines of the day, and you would write four or five jokes about each, and then they would maybe do one uh, from the best one from each. Mm-hmm. And and I guess the biggest difference is when you write jokes as a comic, you want to keep them for a while you know maybe two years three years you're going to tell them over and over and over in each new city but you know with these jokes that you send to radio people it's a day it's gone even if it's the greatest joke in the world it's done so it's uh it's fast it's quick it's quick production yeah now you're in town all weekend long at the funny bone comedy club how can people keep in touch with you on social media you can find me uh at comedian nick griffin on facebook and the nick griffin on um twitter and that's, uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me. And obviously my website, uh, nickgriffin.net. And, uh, yeah, I would love to have uh, more people contact me. Perfect. Well, make sure you hit him up, follow him on Facebook, uh, or follow him on Twitter, like him on Facebook. I always get those big stuff. Yeah. Make sure you do that. And come check, out, check, come check him out at the Funny Bone Comedy Club this weekend. It's a fun show. You're not going to miss it, and you're not going to regret it when you come check him out either. So, Nick, thanks for hanging out Thank with me, Thank you bud. so much for having me. Take care, guys.